Hello, I'm going to be talking to you today about the Sparito effect and how it is uh, describing the MOSFET linear failures that uh, are seen in today's uh, hot swap controllers. The uh, Sparito effect was termed by uh, a gentleman, uh, Professor Paulo Sparito, who investigated the thermal instability effects that were occurring in MOSFETs when they were operated in linear mode. This effect occurs uh, primarily when uh, a MOSFET is operated with its VGS source voltage below the equal gain value, uh, which is where the temperatures uh, curves for the uh, transfer curve all cross over and uh, if there's sufficient voltage across the device during that time and current going through it uh, you can run into uh, some thermal instabilities occurring. Now this effect has been seen uh, a lot in linear applications like hot swap and inrush uh, current controllers where you can have a high current pulse occurring when there's a large voltage across the device. Now the Esperito effect is defined by a region on the SOA curve for the MOSFET. And if you look to the right, what you'll see is there's a region defined near the uh, area where the breakdown voltage is and lower, and for the lower currents. And this, this region is actually not easily calculated. Um, those who have calculated either over or understate uh, the boundaries so they don't really reflect um, reality. And the manufacturers have determined that the only way to define that SOA curve accurately is to test. And uh, something just to be aware when you are using the SOA curves that they're really only valid for 25 degrees C. So why does this effect actually exist? Um, if you're familiar with power MOSFETs and how they're designed, you would know that um, most MOSFETs are designed in an array with multiple cells in parallel. Now if you look here, you'll see that there's a, a sort of diagram showing how international rectifier uh, produce their hex FET array. And you can see that there's cells that are just all operate in parallel on a planar basis and each of these cells has a portion of the current that you know equals the full current rating of the uh, device. So with each of these cells there's a trans transfer curve that's associated with it. This curve defines how much current is going to flow through the device for the voltage applied to the between the gate and the source. If you look at the curve itself, you can see that for each curve for a junction temperature, they cross over in one location. You know, below this region, you'll notice that there's a fairly large gap between you know, the lower temperatures and the higher temperatures, and the same with above it. Now this thermal instability region exists below this crossover point and this is the point at which uh, the gain for the cell is equal for all temperatures. So 175 degree uh, junction temperature would have the same gain as minus 55 degree junction temperature. Below the, this point, if you notice that as the temperature increases, so does your gain. And the gain is kind of related to the slope of these curves. So a steeper super uh, curve means that there's a higher gain involved. And if there's a larger gap with a steep curve, then that also means that a temperature rise uh, on a cell will increase, increase the uh, current density through that cell as the temperature rises. Now this is considered a positive temperature coefficient relationship. Above the crossover point, the curves switch over where increasing temperature reduces the gain. 
So this aids in uh, allowing the devices to, or the, the cells to share current amongst themselves without running into a thermal runaway case. So as I'd mentioned before, the gain on each of these slopes is, or sorry, the gain is defined by the slope and how steep the slope is. So steep slope equals a really high gain, and you'll find that in um, high performance MOSFETs. Now this is where it gets interesting is that if you look here, as I'd mentioned previously, if you have a really high gain, what happens is that you can get a, a significant large increase in current through the cell uh, for a temperature rise. Now if the cell can't manage the temperature in, in that if you cannot get rid of the heat faster than the heat is being generated within the cell, what can happen is that you'll generate a localized hotspot and this localized hotspot will cause the gain to skyrocket on the cell and then what will happen is the cell will steal current from the adjacent cells if they haven't heated up in a similar manner. And as I've said before, this uh, instability is made worse with the new generation devices that have very high gains since they've been optimized for fast switching and until recently most manufacturers didn't uh, represent the region, the Spirito region, on the SOA curves so people were using these devices in a manner that fell outside the SOA curve boundaries. So how do we minimize the chance of the failure? One of the first things you can do is look for the lowest gain MOSFETs where possible. Look for MOSFETs with low crossover voltages so that you're not within the positive temperature coefficient region for that long. Look for MOSFETs that have a very small change in, in gain between the 25C case and the 150 or 175 or whatever the maximum junction temperature is so that you don't see a large increase in gain from cell to cell. Check out the manufacturer's SOA curves. If they don't have tested burrito zones on their SOA curves, then you're going to need to end up testing them. And that's the, really the last thing you can probably do is test. And that will give you the definition or, the, or define the boundary of the SOA uh, operation that you can achieve with the device that you've chosen. So. When you're designing with hot swap or inrush current limiting circuits, some of the other things that you can do is, you know, make sure that whatever's on the other side of the, uh, the switches that you're using, uh, be it DC or DC modules or whatever, you should try and keep them disabled until the rails have stabilized. That uh, this will prevent uh, uh, current spikes during the inrush period. Um, adding additional bypass resistors to shunt some of the current around the MOSFET uh, that's acting in linear mode is also another way to, again, reduce the amount of power being dissipated in the device. Uh, reduce the charge current for cap banks, you know, so that you don't have such a high peak charging current. And you can do this by increasing the time to charge. Um, a, a really safe way would be just ensure you don't exceed the max die temperature. So don't rely on the transient response of the device and don't rely on the SOA curve in the sense that you're looking for how long can you put maximum power through the device for a period of time. If you're always below the die temperature, max die temperature, then you're not likely to run into a thermal runaway case. So as an example where this has come up recently uh, is uh, a linear tech device that was being used for uh, an inrush current limiting application. So this is you know, sold as a hot swap uh, controller and what you have is um, MOSFETs that you know, switch 
on. You have MOSFETs that act as linear to regulate the current between the two, uh, to the two cart slots and uh, the main rail. So what can happen is um, if you do not choose these devices correctly, you can run into the spherical zone and cause a, a failure to occur through the thermal runaway. So in this particular application, you know, we had DC-DC uh, -DC converters running in the background as soon as the voltage had reached a certain uh, value, which added uh, additional current loading in, in on top of the charge current that was required to charge up the capacitor banks. And uh, this, you know, it added together to create a very high um, power dissipation within the device which was enough to trigger off this burrito effect because the cells went into a thermal runaway because they were being driven below the, or in the positive coefficient or temperature coefficient region of the uh, transfer uh, curve. So it was a bit of a head scratcher. So to, again, you know, minimize this effect, you're, you're better to try to keep all loads to a minimum during the inrush current limiting. Keep your regulars uh, in a disabled state until the rail is stabilized, and you know use bypass resistors where possible to uh, you know shunt some of the current around so that you're not running full peak currents through the uh, linear device. So if this was helpful, you know thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to continue producing more of these uh, as more interesting problems pop up and I'm able to go through and describe them. Thanks.